Boom. And then what I'm going to do, all right, it's streaming and no one's viewing. Just totally fine. Uh, so this is the group. Love uh, I stream before I'm actually ready to like start the show, but that's what we'll do. Right. So goes it. So goes it. Uh, oh, who's here? What's that? What's that noise? I don't know what that noise is. I don't hear um, anything. Um, all right. Now I want to invite people. How do I do that? <laughs> here we go. I do this. Add people. No, I just want the... What the hell is this? Like that. Yeah. Um... What I wanted was the link to this podcast. Hmm. I suppose I could just tell people to chat me here if they want to be added. Oh, wait, I sent you the chat. I sent you the link, didn't I? So I can just do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's get started then. Uh, I'm ready, buddy. Can you hear this? Yeah, I forget. You, you can hear me now, but you can't hear other stuff if you like. But let's just try. That's right. We can get the uh, vibe going. Do you hear that? Oh, faintly. Faintly. Hearing Maddie is the sad, depressing sounds of my favorite sad song. Christmas Time is Here by the Vince Cook. Really? Mm. Probably Brown Christmas. I got a fun surprise for you when you ask me the first question. You'll, you'll, it's a reference I think you'll get right away. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Let's get underway now that we got the mood set. It's Maddie and Patty, coast to coast. Welcome to a sad and forlorn Cleveland Sports Hour. We are two self aware but unapologetic homers who spend far too much time watching, reading, and thinking about the sad sack bunch of nice young men that we call the Cavs. So if you like the informed Cleveland fans' perspective, and especially if you are a fellow Cleveland fan and just need a place to get your mind right, well, my friend, you have come to the right place. In New York, I remind you, this is world champion Pat McMenamin. From Los Angeles, I am joined by fellow world champion Matt Younger. Say hello, champion. Hey, champ. Champ, at times like these, as Cavs fans, I think it's important to remind ourselves of one very simple and important thing. 2016. We are champions, Maddie. Even if it's not this year. Before that year, 2016, we could not say that. Now we do, and we do every time we do this fucking podcast ever since that fucking day. LeBron won that championship for Cleveland so that we don't have to feel the way we did after every sports heartbreak before 2016, when we weren't champions and we're still waiting to be champions. He did not quite die to absolve us of our sins, but he won to absolve us of our abject sports misery. Maybe it's blasphemy to say that, but I'm Jewish now, so who cares? I can say it, right? I think. I think you can say that. I, I don't know how any of that works, Patty. Uh, well, it works as far as I'm concerned. I'm <laughs> sure. If you feel good, well, I, I say it works. Uh, how are you feeling, Maddie? How are you feeling right now? You know, uh, uh, okay, yeah, good, yeah, 
Oh, okay. I, I, I think I pre-grieved. <laughs> yes. You grieved all season. The regular season, think, you grieved. I think I pre-grieved on this one, so I'm doing okay now. Um, I honestly do feel a little bit about like that. I mean, you, you know, our first playoff podcast, you knew what my prediction was. You knew how worried I was. I was a broken record on this through the end of the season, and so I think I got a lot of it out. And especially that first game when I was uh, Bill Paxtoning it, much to your chagrin. You weren't wrong. I, you just didn't need to fucking hear it. No, no. I, I appreciate where you were coming from for sure. Um, oh, man. You were you were wrong. Um, so I think I had that. And, and even back then, I was like, God, we're going to lose. And it's going to beg a lot of tough questions about this team moving forward, which is wh where we're at now. So I don't want to I don't know where you want to start, Pat. You want to look back a little bit at this series and what went wrong and. I mean, we covered a lot of that the last time we were together. It's not like anything happened in game five that didn't happen in games three and four. Yeah. I, I other than no no corrections. We're going to be a little freeform tonight, Maddie. So wherever you want to go with things. Ooh, ooh. For example, we already have a potential caller. So hold on. Before we get started with this first caller, uh, Ned, if you're listening, uh, uh, we might get some call-ins tonight. This is self-care tonight. So we're going to work these calls in pretty much wherever they come in. Uh, but before I go to that first call, tonight, to me, the most important theme, the most important question to answer tonight, of course, naturally, is who to blame, Maddie? <laughs> <laughs> who can we fucking blame? <laughs> let's, let's be dark. Let's, 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 give in, let's give in to the dark side tonight. Let's let it all out. Uh, we can get there. Why don't we start this off, though, with our first caller, uh, 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 the number one fan of the podcast, uh, Ned Sackman. I'm going to admit him right now. Bring him, in. Um, bring him in. I just admitted him. Uh, let's see what's happening. It takes a second to get in, just like it does with you. Um, and while we're waiting, unless he jumps in, I mean, I think you know the, the key thing we're going to be talking about. Again, go back to your point when you said when I said that you were uh, a little bit uh, uh, too doomy early on in Game One. It was right in the sense that we figured shit out. There was that counter in game two, and you said, oh, hey, he did yep. this counter. It's everything that happened after game two. Like, yeah. And you know, the, the game the one thing, was wrong because we had something going game two, but then we fucking lost it. The thing I've been thinking about, um, you know, Allen and Mobley are taking a lot of heat for the offensive rebounds and that, you know, that being a big problem. It wasn't good, but we knew that wasn't going to be good going in. That's a weakness of ours and an enormous strength of the Knicks. Our defense did not cost us that series. No. The Knicks' offense was bad. Like the offensive ratings for those two teams would be. I was just listening to um, uh, Zach Lowe's podcast after Game Four, and he was like, "These two, the offensive ratings for those two teams would have been, I think, the worst in the league, worse than the Charlotte Hornets this year. Terrible." So. Our, as ugly as it was and frustrating, giving up all that offensive rebounding and not us not liking the defense on Brunson, that's not why we lost. We lost because our offense was horrible. Ooh. And now maybe some of that was us getting out physical on um, on that end. I'm willing to hear some of that and us just not having enough dog in us or you know whatever cliche you want to use there. Our offense was bad all year. I don't think JB ever schemed it correctly. I think we touched on that in my worries going into the series. The offense never clicked. There we are. Our four-man unit, I think even through game five, certainly through game four, our core four was a plus 10 or something throughout throughout the time they had on the court together. I think that four plus a Coro, which was our most played five-man unit this year. Did I send this to you today? I can't remember. Yes, you did. Most yeah. played five-man unit this year played – a vanishingly small number of minutes in this series. I think he gave up on a Coro way too quick. Way too quick. Coro, was a Coro maybe our best player in that game yesterday, two days ago, whatever was. it was yesterday? Only guy fucking with a heart. And also in that, that game, we got, well, yeah, what did we get? Six or seven threes out of a Coro, Chetty, and Levert? One from, did Stevens hit one? One from somebody else, too. I think yeah. like that should. So our offense was the worst and i i blame jb i mean i have donovan mitchell was not good no doubt about that and he deserves some some side eye for that and some genuine concern about what we gave up moving forward um but i even think some of that was the jb's inability to scheme on that end that really really hurt us 
Patty, can I throw a dark thought at you? Oh, please. This is this is the time for darkness. Hello, darkness. I think this is I think this was Jason Lloyd's column in the Athletic, uh, which was pretty scathing, and was made a point that's not wrong on its surface. I think the the analysis from there is the question analysis from there, but. He was like, we made this trade. We gave up all these assets. We could have lost in the first round this year with Markin and Sexton. And uh, what's the rookie's name? I've never Marlon. learned how to say his name. Yeah. Yeah. We never had to because he never played a game for us. Uh, no, he, I'm he's sorry. gone too soon. So, like, that's that's about as dark as it gets. It's like, would you rather lose in the first round this year and have all your draft picks and some flexibility or lose like we did, have no draft picks moving forward, and have Donovan Mitchell walk in two years? when it's time to go or have to trade him. But like you want to get dark. That's that's dark, Patty. Uh, well, one, first of all, I, 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 I hope Skyler will call in tonight. Cause I thought that, you know, say that for that, it feels like we already had the Skyler call just now with the market and <laughs> market. And talk. Yeah. 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 I, I get it. But I mean, I, he's not entirely right about all that. Right. I think we were a better team this year with Mitchell, but, yeah, and, this is a bad. This is a bad series to lose. A bad series to lose, especially the way that we did. Yeah, where outside of a little stretch in game one when we came back to tie it and blew it at the end, we weren't really in games three, four, or five. Not really. I never felt like we were going to win, and that's even my pessimistic losing six approach. I was like, oh, we'll handle them in a couple games and then lose a couple close ones because. You know, I think our offense down the stretch is garbage and all the concerns that I have. But I didn't think it was going to be – not like this, Patty. Yeah, yeah. I did not think that was going to happen. Not, um, like this, not like this. I mean, <clears throat> big picture-wise, I mean, Donald Mitchell throughout the, throughout the regular season showed us how uh, important he was. Uh, the downside was it was an, a marginal improvement it was the marginal improvement, which it was cl a clear marginal improvement, right? To go from marketing and, and uh, uh, the pieces that we had already on the team to somebody like Donovan Mitchell, we'd never had since LeBron, somebody who could do what he did in those games, yeah. the 71 point game, all those clutch games where he just took over down the stretch and was just driving to the basket and making things happen and playing great defense and all that stuff. Um, he was that man. He was him and all that stuff. Um, the problem was, um, is it worth giving up all your draft capital? That's yeah. that's the big question. Like, not, I don't know if it was quite worth that. All right, I think we might have our first caller in here. Uh, there he is, Ned Sackman. Yo, what's up, dude? What's up, my safe space here? How 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 are you feeling right now uh, uh, after that uh, stinking egg the Cavs laid this? this week i think the way we lost the last game was an embarrassment it didn't look like they wanted to win the game and uh i think they need to fire jb mm -hmm. and i find myself hoping that it comes out that donovan mitchell was injured during the series and they didn't tell us because otherwise i don't know what the excuse is for him but you bring up you bring up donovan mitchell he had a bad series, obviously. A lot of guys had bad series. We'll get into a bunch of those guys. Part of me looks at that and goes, is this – Is this? How, how much of this is Donovan Mitchell and how much of it is JV? Because he's your clearly your best player. As good as everybody else is in the team. Well, everybody He's going to make first team all NBA this year. Yeah, I know. I was real. I was making a real stink about him not getting it and because he deserved it. He did. He did deserve it from this year. The same way that Dirk Nowitzki won the, deserved the MVP when he got bounced in the first round. He still deserved it, but it was embarrassing. But he's your best player. Did you get any sense of any kind of planning, scheming, plays for him to run? Or would you just say, uh, did just JB tell him just just go cook? Which is just like, I, I don't think that's like Donald Mitchell can do that stuff. But if they're scheming against him, you have to have counters. They threw doubles at him. We never took advantage of them. He would just reset. There was never any. We never made them pay for double teaming him, so it took him out of his rhythm. So of course he fucking sucked. He had nothing. He had no idea what to do. He was had, it, it was relegated to just chucking shots or driving into three huge dudes, including uh, Mitchell Robinson. It was a fucking, to me, 
that's an indictment on JB. And I've been saying to Manny for a while, I've been standing up for JB. I stick up for JB. I stick up for you, man. The minute I tip over the other direction, I, I come down like a ton of bricks on him because I, I, I stood up for him and I feel like he's completely let this whole team down. I didn't. JB deserves heat for that. But oh, sorry. Go ahead, Ned. I'm just answering Pat's question. I didn't see them doing anything other than like some high pick and rolls. And even that seemed more with Garland. Yeah. Um, they kind of just let Mitchell try to dribble into the middle without really doing anything else for him. And they certainly weren't running anything, you know, off ball or any of those flare screens or things you see some of the more sophisticated offenses doing to get in the ball in space or with an open jumper or anything. Um, but I guess I, I don't know that they were doing that a lot for him earlier this year either. I watched less games than you guys did. He just, that's why I'm saying it's a little on him because he, he was less able to create his own shots and he, and he just missed a lot of shots that, I mean, those off the dribble threes, he hit a ton of those during the season and he was just missing them. Yeah, what did he shoot, 20, 25% from three or something for the series? He was, is that right? I mean, yeah. I just, it was in that range. That's definitely what I would have guessed around there, given the amount of shots I saw on this. But, I, you know, I the JB stuff, I agree with you guys on the in-game tactics. They haven't been good, um, and that's one reason. The other reason is this is the second year in a row they've just looked utterly unprepared for the moment. Completely. And especially that last game. I mean, you're at home. The season's on the line. You know, a, a prouder team, a team that was more battle-tested or whatever word you want to use, better coached, really, better prepared, would have fought for that game. Um, and I was looking at, like, the degree to which we got out-rebounded in our last game when we should have been fighting for our lives. It's just gross. You know what? You have a good point, uh, Ned, when you're talking about how we were missing these threes and, and all that stuff. Um, I mean, one thing I, I, again, will say is that uh, and the playoffs are different. To me, there was just no game plan. He was he was just freelancing out there. And to me, that's just lazy. That's that's unconscionable. Like You've got this great weapon and you just say, hey, go do stuff. Go do stuff. Just poke him with a stick. That, that's, that's not coaching. It's bullshit. But interesting, you said about uh, how bad our shooting was. Would you like to guys just like to know what the three point shooting was for the whole series between the two teams? Oh, I know the Knicks were horrendous too. Twenty eight percent was what the Knicks shot from three. That was I was worried about them just just going crazy from three. They shot twenty eight percent for three. Their field goal percentage was forty three percent. That's not good. Do you know what ours was? We shot uh, thirty two, almost thirty three percent from three, and almost forty five percent from the field. We had better shooting averages across the fucking board, and we got our asses handed to us because of Ralph. I, I mean, what were the? How badly were we out rebounded, and how many more field goal attempts did they have? Uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Knicks. Um, now give me a second here. Total rebounds: two hundred twenty-seven, uh, one hundred eighty-six for the Cavs. Feels like that's closer than I thought, but but it's still pretty bad. What it, does it have an offensive rebound breakout? Yeah, it's, it's offensive the, rebound. We had 46 offensive rebounds. They had 75. <laughs> Nearly doubled us. Good. Nearly doubled us. As you said, the real I'm guessing, I'm, Robinson having 11 offensive rebounds more than rebounds than any single member of the Cavs had, period. End of story. A double I'm digit also, offensive rebound. Jesus fucking Christ. The, the Knicks. Whole lot, I mean, this is the there was a worry, and this was sort of the Knicks offense all year was offensive rebounding and getting to the foul line. So they out offensive rebound, that's not a surprise. They got to the foul line more than us. Also, not a surprise, although I think we could have should have mitigated that. Mitchell didn't get to the line at all. Um yeah. I still maintain, I said this at the beginning, uh Ned, before you hopped on. I the offensive rebound rebounding is bad for sure, but predictable and was not a surprise that that was going to happen. We're a bad defensive rebounding team. They're an excellent, excellent offensive rebounding team. That wasn't a shock. In as much as it manifested in us just getting out-hustled and out-worked all the time, fine. But I actually don't think – our defense isn't why we lost that series. Our, our Them getting offensive rebounds isn't why we lost that series. It was our 
stinky ass offense that cost us there. Stinky ass offense definitely cost us. All right, we got caller number two in here. Scott Schmidt. Let me uh, What's up, let Sam? say one more thing. Hold on, Sky. Hold, hold your thought for one second. I'm going to let Ned go uh, uh, finish up his thought. I, I acknowledge that we've just had Skylar Schmidt join us, and I'm definitely interested in his take. I, just, I have one more thing I want to say, and this is an anti-JV thing. Um, when you have a series like this where the teams play each other a bunch of games in a row and you know you sit and watch them all, you can kind of tell – like what the teams think of each other and get, this is very like Simmons esque body language type of take here. But I got to say, having watched all the games in this series, the Knicks, like they, they came in there like, these guys are punks. We can handle them. And that's how they treated us. And that's, we just let them do that mm -hmm. to us. And we lack toughness, ment mental toughness, physical toughness. And I blame JB for that. And a little bit, I blame Evan Mobley for that. Evan Mobley. Interesting. Okay. I did not like, and I'm totally stepping on Scully here now because I'm sure he has a take. So oh, he's, he's, he's grinning like the Cheshire cat right now. I really did not like that ringer profile of him. Um, it was supposed to be like a almost a puff piece. But when I read it, I was like, this guy does not have the mental approach that is going to bring the best out of him and i mean i understand like he might he might end up being a happier more well-adjusted person um <laughs> but in terms of like success you know he's he's gonna he's i fear he's gonna be one of those players with with tantalizing talent but he just never quite puts it together on the floor you know i think of carl anthony towns or um Gilbert Arenas, guys that just like, you know, were very talented, but just mentally weren't, you know, weren't NBA vet type players. And um, I think that's where we're headed with Mobley. I'm in a, I'm in a low spot. So that's I, hey, This is a dark space. This is a safe space. This is where we let all the dark thoughts come out. Uh, I won't disagree. I won't, I won't pretend that I haven't had those thoughts about Mobley. This is also what the, the – the knock on him was like, is he driven? Is he driven to be great? Um, but I think this offseason and this next season will definitely tell you a lot about Evan Mobley. Like, like can he get to another gear with that kind of personality? Um, and that's the question. Like, he he, he sounds like a really well adjusted good young man, right? A lot of the caps sound like good young men that are driven, competitive, but they just don't have that asshole dog in them, right? We uh, need a motherfucker on this team. Yeah, no, exactly. D does the entire team need to be a motherfuckers? Because I, you know, when I play, I have to be honest. Whenever I get really mad and get pissed off, I actually get off my game and play worse. Uh, I I thrive better when I'm playing positive, and that's what maybe these guys are kind of like as well. But like, you kind of need somebody else on the team to be the fucking asshole, so you don't have to be the asshole. Because we have to be the asshole badly. pulls us out of their game, it pu pulls them out of their game. You need somebody else to be that guy, and so like that's what this team needs potentially. Maybe, maybe that will unlock Mobley, allow him to be, <laughs> allow him to be his uh, his unicorn self. Eddie, I, I want to make one point before Skyler jumps in, which is yep. just to, to Ned's thing. I referenced that Jason Lloyd piece, which is if you if you want to wallow in some darkness, go do that. But he starts out being like. I'm paraphrasing here and I'm going to curse, but he was like that fucking junkyard dog necklace that they were giving out this year. Throw smelt that shit in the Cuyahoga river. Yes. Smelt down. Cause that was some nonsense. Cause this team had no dog in them. Yeah. And ultimately I, I texted this to Patty today after like all the quotes from the Cavs are just about like, Oh, uh, we didn't, you know, like they, they, we were more talented than them. They just wanted it more. We weren't tough. And like all the stuff that we're saying sort of, and I was like, if the for the JV defenders, that is the number one thing you're going to say is the the attitude and the spirit and the camaraderie. Like you got to do some of that woo woo stuff for him if you're going to defend him. And if that's what's coming out from the team and that's what they had, then there's no then there's nothing because that was his number one attribute, and that was smoke it's and an, mirrors. Indictments, an indictment. And they said that yeah. they didn't want it enough. They didn't want it enough. Like why? What do you fucking need to want it? God damn it. Yeah, maybe these All guys right. should have been scared of their coach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yes. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they need, or you're right. They need the, you know, 
they need and the maybe Jordan the coach Mons. is the motherfucker we need to your they point, need the maybe. charles bark uh charles oakley you know they need that that Kendrick guy Perkins. <laughs> um but schmitty's been sitting there patiently so I'll all right my I think, happy to stick around Ned, but uh, yeah but it's gotta go ahead no i think you guys are hitting a lot of points i think there's a few few items i mean listening to your pod it's been good things that Right when the trade was announced last year, I, I love Mitchell, and I've seen probably more games of his than anyone, but I knew one of the weaknesses with the Cavs was they were you know they were small at that guard position, and they, they traded away some of that size. And so I thought Mitchell's, you know, he's a top player, superstar, amazing talent af- athlete, but position by position, the Cavs are small at each position. And this, this series proved that, and we also have very little depth as well. So I think... I don't blame JB as much as you guys do. I think there are flaws with the game plan, and he's just kind of a stubborn coach when it comes to, like, I've got this. I, I sort of blame the whole franchise in general of – You don't Hubert. like the roster construction. Yeah, remember the Hubert, remember that word? Kobe Altman's on our list to blame. Lot, hey, we tell me who to blame. Kobe Altman's that means, on that list. Go ahead. I blame Hubris. Like, we're good with what we have. You know, we're going to we're gonna improve by getting Danny Green at the deadline. We're going to – Get a, a Ricky Rubio. We're gonna trade our one, our one asset for Ricky Rubio coming off an ACL surgery because we got guys that are good for like team chemistry. Like, no, you need actual players that are good players. Like, let's not. We're not like a. We're not like a 75, 70 win team that needs like a couple of guys for veteran leadership. We need guys that are depth guys with talent. Like, when you have missing holes at small forward. Backup center forward, you have forwards that can't shoot. You're cutting, you're cutting your best big backup big because he's upset about playing time. Like, because you're, are you afraid to confront him and say, okay, maybe right now you're not playing that much, but later on in the season we might need you? Because that's really what you should have done there. Everyone goes through games where they have poor stretches. Like, if he had seen Kevin Love's history, he knows that you know he's he gets injured sometimes. He has a mental funk. You know, Kevin. So anyway, all the. I kind of blame hubris in general, like, oh, we're good enough. Like, we, we're good with what we've got, basically, that mentality. No, you need to keep improving. Look at the Lakers. Look what they did, you know? All these teams, like, that improved at the deadline, the Knicks improved the down. We're not going to go into heart because I know that that's a sore topic for you, Pat. No, but, let's go into it. Okay. It's yeah. your call. It's your call. It's your time. No, I, I, I just think I, I want them to approach the team going forward as, like, anytime you, you guys, you know, you have jobs and stuff, you're – you're constantly trying to improve yourself. You're trying to put your best product out there. The Cavs kind of were like, we're great with what we got. We're improving on the fringes. No, you don't have strength. Like, you don't have shooting at the forward position. You don't have physical toughness or strength. You need to keep improving that roster. And don't say Evan Mobley is a finished product when he's not a finished product. Don't don't anticipate something three years down the road that hasn't happened yet. You know, so, so that's I kind of – and and Allen a little bit too, like you're great, you're this, you're that. You know what Allen is great, but obviously he needed help in the series. And you know, anyway, so that's that's my take is like we need to we need to be improving the roster. We need to look at our weaknesses, physical strength, shooting at the forward position. They addressed the big weakness, which was having a second primary ball hitter score to Garland. That was the thing they addressed. So that's great. Mitchell is a great player, he's gonna be a great player in the next couple of years, but you have to if you have any chance of going anywhere in the playoffs, you have to you have to look at the rest of your roster and really do something about it. And you can't rely on Evan Mobley developing a Larry Nance twenty foot jump shot because that may or may not happen. So anyway, that's that's my that's my take. But I would add to that, Skyler, a coach yeah. that is not fucking around for the entire second half of the season yeah. and not preparing his team for the yes. playoffs. Because that's clear. I mean, I was on this about him not settling on a on a rotation through the back end of the season but all I, this is in the lloyd piece too like not nah, who cares about the regular season and i was guilty about worrying about winning games i fair enough but like get your house in order and get your team ready for the playoffs and that absolutely did not happen our offense never got better our schemes never got better he never developed a talent in the way that we needed to to win it was it's bad. The, the contrast between JB Bickerstaff and Eric Spolster right now is just so stark. I just think we need to cut bait with Bickerstaff. I think we know he we can't win a championship with him. Um, 
And I just think he's a fine coach. He can hang around in the league. I mean, look, like Mike Brown obviously eventually has, has found his stride and maybe Bickerstaff will, but I don't see a future for him with this team. I think we're going to bring this team up another probably, what, like level and a half it needs to go f- until it's a true contender. Yeah, you can't deal with him. you got to have someone else. Cut bait. Uh, I, I, I'm speaking with the zeal of the converted right now, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm banging the warp path on this. And I, I hate like one, I fucking hate talking like this. I, I don't like calling for anyone's job. I don't. And, and the thing is that dude's going to have a long career as a coach in this league. He is talented. He's got a lot of good stuff going, but like he's, this is, I'm sorry. You, you can't, you can't coach like this in the playoffs and not have a consequence. Like that's what, what the league is. What what about this instead? Like how the Cavs did with was Lou? I don't remember if Lou was there from the start, but you bring in that second command, like a vote, a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorum, like kind of like that whole thing. You're we're gonna I'm gonna give you a Star Wars reference, like we but bring a prequel in prequel like, Star Wars top, reference, Skylar. So it's a demerit for the prequels. Yeah. But go ahead, yeah. go ahead. We bring a top a top assistant coach as kind of like an understudy and basically saying like. We're watching your back, JB. Like we're gonna give you the first twenty games of the season to kind of get your shit together next year. And if not, this guy is the heir, heir in, in waiting to to step in. Like is this, is this double secret probation, like from uh, Animal House? You know, one advantage with that situation that we have is I don't think <laughs> there are s- stars on that team who are connect. Like, would it really piss off Mitchell or Garland if we got rid of him? No. So maybe, uh, maybe a little bit, but nah. Piss them off. They get it. They get it. They, yeah, they yeah. you know what? Piss them off. It's your fault. He's gone. <laughs> it's gonna be a well, sure, but I mean, it's not as though you've got some situation where you've got a, yeah. you know, a, a super suit, you know, Luca or Katie or somewhere you've got to like consult with them on the coach and they've got this relationship. Like it just, you just get rid of them. I mean, and I got my issue with Nick Nurse, Nurse, Nick Nurse, but like I think that guy right now over this, this is this is bad. This is this I was, got I was kind of half joking about Nick Nurse when I threw that out there on the chat, and a bunch of people were like, "That's disgusting," mm-hmm. and I don't know. I mean, uh, over Steve I'm and only Skyler hate Nick Nurse. I like. I hate, him. I, I hate him too. Nurse. I hate him too. I don't hate him. I don't hate him. What about Vogel? I'm I'm thinking. Vogel, yeah, Vogel's not bad. He's a good coach. Vogel's a good coach. Part of me was like, "Damn, I wish we got Udoka." Yeah, uh, I think, is it? We got we got enough uh, sexual harassers in the Cleveland environment. Sexual harassment. You don't want to. First of all, that guy. You don't want to see Udoka in a at an at a Guardians game with uh, Watson. Yeah, well, it's not just that. It's not just that. But this organization is so fragile. To throw somebody that is that disrespectful of basic like organizational strictures like that's just it's just this chaos it's you're just throwing chaos and napalm into the situation that's a bad idea it's um, a fair point i yeah. just think he might be a pretty good coach that's really i don't know it seems like the sun has been i mean like yes they're struggling right now literally as we speak but i don't know that it's been that much of a difference between the two coaches has it at boston fans would tell you yes yeah. well i don't know i was real say- mad at missoula a lot of them said that the Missoula's running the same shit that uh, Udoka did, so and they're pissed at, for the same reasons. What I was, was what I was reading, but I, again, which comes down to some personnel, which again comes back to this this roster is sort of what it is. Can I bring you guys another question about Jared Allen? Because I saw a bunch of people saying like Jared Allen, trade that guy, get him off this fucking team. I just responded, which I thought was the very obvious thing to say, is guys, that's fucking crazy. Yes, he's been bad, but. You don't just jettison and get rid of and you know someone that has been really fucking valuable for two fucking years. Like uh, I get it, he's not been playing well, but what value do you think you're getting for him right now when he's been playing the poorest, like most you know that he's played? Is great. This is just dumb to talk about getting rid of Jared Allen for what peanuts? That's stupid. But like, how much of this? Like it, it, uh, Jared Allen has some limits. But again, is this about Jared Allen being soft, which it may be, or is it about JB just not knowing how to use this guy? Because that dude's got like some some fucking talent, and I don't feel like it's being used in the right way. 
I mean, there were all those threads, Patty, of uh, there's a couple of guys on Cavs Twitter that we follow who are on this who are like, yeah, Jared Allen definitely got out muscled by Mitchell Robinson, but the schemes we were using where he was coming out to trap the ball handler and getting pulled away from the basket and just allowed Robinson to set up shop down there just did not put him in a position to, yeah. to succeed. Another thing I point out is that because the problem, the biggest problem is they have Jarrett and, and, and Mobley right now, Mobley at the moment aren't outside shooting threats. So it clogs the paint, right? You play the two of them together. Yes. You've got two towers playing defense and we have a great defense, but then it stifles the offense, which can fuck up the defense, right? That's the paradox. But here's the thing, like alternating them is also a possibility, but the problem is that our, who, who are we alternating with? Like, what's that four going to be? We got rid of Kevin Love, partially because Kevin Love was sucking, but now he's playing great, of course, because that's Cleveland sports. Um, but that then becomes the big question. How, who do you get in the offseason that allows you to, to safely play long minutes with just one of those bigs instead of both of them at the same time? There's spots you can play the two of them, and it's devastating, right? Especially if Mobley can develop. It worked for a lot of the year for us. And it didn't work most of the season, right? But in the playoff series, you want to be able to play long stretches where they are alternating, being the center and having somebody else who can play that. That, But I mean, I mean you know who they thought? It must be Dean Wade, right? But Dean Wade has, 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 has turned into a pumpkin. Uh, it does feel as though, I mean, I haven't gone and looked at the, at the contracts, but there are guys available on the fringes on the fringes who could have been contributors on this team. Like if you just took, you know, if you took a Coro and um, who I thought was one of the only guys who looked like he gave a damn the last game. Uh, but if you took a Coro and Osman and Stevens and uh, Wade, and you just kind of like cleared those spots, there do seem to be guys around that could help us that are not, you know, like, I don't know, like, do you think Bismack Biombo would be difficult to get? Like, do you think, you know, Umar Saban in Miami? Like, there are guys who are like could play. Um, and you know, I mean, Mason Plumley maybe is a bit like guys that are, and I don't know the contracts in these guys, but I'm just saying, like, these are guys who are not no one thinks like, oh, oh my God, we gotta go get Mason Plumley, but you know, like, that, I mean, Hardenstein, like there are a bunch of guys who just kind of floating around or sort of available and maybe available on minimums or, you know, hey, some hey. of these other contracts. And I just think we got rid of a lot of those role players and tried to replace them with guys. We don't do it all at once, but bring in some guys where we need just to solidify. I mean, it's what a lot of these teams do. You know what? Doing it, LA's doing it where they've got like their core good players and then they're just sort of, dumpster diving for the others, but they're ending up with players that are as good or better than what we're rolling out there. Yeah. You throw out a name, Mo Bamba. That would have been a good pickup. Big player, yeah, good Skylar. rebounding, can make a three-point shot. Scott, I got one better for you. I can't believe you didn't, you didn't say this yeah. before I did, but, you know, uh, I have some inside intel. Um, uh, you know, actually, all four of us have some inside intel um, on – there's a there's a guy out there uh, on a league <laughs> when we know uh, who is uh, who's who's playing for a contract. Uh, he's going to bring a certain uh, uh, foreign basketball team to the playoffs. I mean, Demarcus Cousins. Should we get Boogie Cousins? <laughs> or, or or his new new rival Hassan Whiteside. Or Hassan White. I don't want any part of Hassan Whiteside. That dude's a fucking disaster. You don't want any part of Josh Hart either. You don't like you don't like rebounding. <laughs> I, hey look i'm sure ed davis is available too <laughs> hilarious are you talking about the guanabo mets the guanabo mets mm -hmm. my new favorite team maybe <laughs> Shout I'm, buying out a, I'm buying a shirt right now as we talk yeah let, let me i'll right let you guys here. i'll let you guys do a thing let me leave you this one thought for yeah. and i i was telling him this today a french jeff for seek younger you might have seen this article or not i couldn't I couldn't remember what article I saw. I was reading some article yesterday after the game. Or maybe it was this morning. And it mentioned, it is an interview, I think, of one of the Cavs. It might have been Mitchell or it might have been a different guy. I think it was Mitchell. And he was, like, admitting, basically, like, the playoffs are a different animal. We just were not prepared mentally for the level of commitment on each possession. The um, I think it was Garland. 
the fatigue, the like the fat yeah, the fatigue that and the like the mental toughness that go, but also physical toughness as well. So that kind of reaches every every level there of like we don't have enough depth, we don't have enough size or strength. We don't our coaching hasn't prepared us mentally or physically. So it kind of reaches like and the roster is not where it is in the in the spots of like five roster spots five through nine too. So I think that sort of reaches everything, but it definitely hits hard at like the we're not mentally prepared for this. I don't think we get rid of JB yet personally, but I do think there this needs to be a case, needs needs to be a wake up call. Guys. This needs what's to be an absolute wake up call. Yeah. Fair, but what's your case for keeping? What's the, what's the benefit of keeping it? Um, I think it will upset team chemistry. I think there is like a there's a camaraderie in the group. I think you can have you've had teams that have like look at Michael Jordan's Bulls for example. We're not on that level, but there are teams that have failed in the playoffs and they come back stronger in a couple seasons, you know, look at the Pistons, look at even LeBron's Cavs. Like you're looking at teams that fail for a couple of years. And I don't think we're at the level of talent, but I think teams can improve with the, with the same, obviously Jordan, they had to switch his coach to get better, did, but I think. Did, did, yeah. Didn't they change coaches? Oh, shit. <laughs> Ned, 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 Ned left. Nothing. But yeah, I think, I, I think the camaraderie you, you have that, you know, there's kind of a balance that you have to strike there between like, we have to improve, but also like we can't just bail one bad series. We can't just bail on, on, on people as well. So I think, yeah, but anyway. my counter to that Skylar is it's yeah. not one bad series. This is yeah. three seasons in a row where the team has failed to improve or actively gotten worse towards the end of the series. It was two terrible play in games last year. Plus this bad series. Right. No, I, I think, I, yeah, no, I don't think he valid, has it. Man. Valid points. It's all valid points, but yeah. anyway, I'll let you guys do your show, but yeah, it was good to, Good to jump in here, and uh, we're still champs, All right? Can we do a? Can we do a, a? This is Maddie, and this is Patty, and this is Schmitty. That's like one of my dreams. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Schmitty. <laughs> friendship. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. No, no, just like the beginning. The beginning. This is Maddie, Patty, and then I'm gonna say Schmitty. Can we just do that? Nice. Sure. Right. Right. So this is Good. Patty. This is Maddie. This is Schmitty. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> we that. We All, right. Work on that. <laughs> All right, champs. See you later. All right, Take champ. Care, Good work, champ. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. We got to work on that. Maddie, Patty, Patty, and Schmitty. Quite good. add the ring to it, but it's getting close to it. We got we got, we got, we got to work on that. We'll, so, like, we'll sort it. Yeah, we'll sort Patty, it. the other thing I'm watching, the I mean, Atlanta's going to lose this game, it looks like, but do you think we would have taken this Boston team to six games? Hell no. We weren't taking Atlanta six games. We'd be out in right? five against Atlanta. I think the only team we might have had a chance of beating is the Nets, Nets, right? That's it. That's it. Period. End of story. We would have gotten blown out, crushed, not even getting to seven games against any other fucking team in the playoffs. That is an indictment. I got to I gotta do a lot more thinking about why Why was our, our, our uh, point differential so good this year? Why did we have the second best point differential in the league? It doesn't make any sense because I remember I was I had my whole we don't have any si signature wins bits, which was true. I guess we never we didn't get blown out. Very we didn't get often. blown out a lot. We hung around. We played hard. We checked in because they stopped. They 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 you know stopped playing hard and we played kept playing hard. And that was like sort of like a that's the do gooder thing. Like hey, we're gonna keep playing hard and you'll get there. But like playoffs it made me level. think that we had heart. Yeah. Well, it's the whole dog chain thing. The dog chain thing that play out and then the regular season made sense. It was like, all right, yeah, all right, we're, we're you know, we're working hard. This is great. The minute I knew that the dog chain was made by Jared, I I fucking hated it for the minute. Do you know, oh, you know, you know, the Jared, um, the jeweler. I, I I know exactly who you're talking about. I wish oh, I didn't know that. When they brought out, brought out the playoff chain, it was like by Jared. I was like, oh, you're fucking kidding me. And I read closer. I'm like, oh, fuck. It was made by Jared the whole fucking time because it's a fucking it, like it's a fucking uh, uh, cash grab shit sponsorship. Jesus Christ! Get the that fucking, really. I fucking hate. I Jared. almost wish I didn't know that, Patty. Now you do. You can't unknow it. No, I cannot. That makes that's upsetting. You know, it's like that. You know, he's like, yeah, did he do well? He went to Jared. You know yeah. what, Maddie? The Cavs. The Cavs went to Jared, Maddie. Yeah, that yeah, it's that's what that says. Get the fuck out of here, Cavs. Come on, Man. cut that off. I'm sorry, Jared. That was a very smart play by you guys, but get the fuck out of my basketball team.
Yeah, that's we don't need we don't need schlocky. Uh, uh, no, no offense. I guess offense. <laughs> schlocky mass market jewelry company doing the junkyard dog chain. That's not what the fucking point of the junkyard dog chain is. I get yeah. the playing and stuff too, but it just this is just come on, shit. But God, ah! Ah! so Patty, we know how we feel about JB. What do you want to do with the roster next year? Yeah, you're, res you're resigning Levert. Yeah, I mean, you got to. He, he he proved it. Look, dude, that's a useful piece. This is my point with Jared Allen. Yeah, did he fuck up in ways? Is he frustrating? Yes. What else are you going to fucking do with that money, yeah. with that space, with that person, with that spot? I mean, I think Nothing. I, I want to see that there's a number that I'd rather not go above for yeah, LeVert, but I don't yeah, think there's a huge sure. market out there for him either. So I'm hoping we can settle on something reasonable. No one is going to go nuts trying to sign him away from us. Fucking A. No one. No, I don't think so either. I will. And then I'm worried that. About, yeah. I'm worried about the payment. Know, payment but like, we should pay, we pay him a decent amount, but like, you got to, like, yeah, I, we'll see. We'll see. Go ahead. Um, you know, Robin Lopez, I presume, is not on the team next year, and that's fine. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the spots they have to think about their mid-level exception and bringing in. Bring in Boogie, man. Come on. I'll take Boogie. I'll take bring Bring in a big dude. Well, ideally, a big man who can shoot a little is a thing off the bench. Dean Wade, I know Skyler is so, so sour on him. I think you're a little he sour bounced. on him. He was, he was good. He was good. I think his, I think he hurt his shoulder and he never got right. From yeah, it give, for give the him an off year. season to get right. I, I think he'll be a, it'll be a different person next year. Um, yes, Sam Merrill, Sam while. Merrill in full pit tra full training camp mode. At Sam, I, I don't, I don't buy it. I, I used to be excited about Isaiah Mobley, maybe, but now Isaiah Mobley actually is a very interesting thing. He was fucking. Kind of awesome, quietly, and a better shooter than his brother uh, uh, throughout uh, G League. Uh, uh, so he was he was actually pretty interesting. So uh, that actually is a is a, is, a, is a something not to to lose sight of. Um, but you know, I, I would say don't don't lose sight of Sam. I'm not saying count on Sam Merrill. I'm just saying keep it in mind. Who knows what the fuck's going to happen? With that the guy can fucking shoot, and we could use a guy like that. You know, in the rotation, uh, because we just did not fucking have it this year. I don't know that he's gonna make the playoff rotation, but who no fucking knows? Like, if someone, if someone can play their way into that rotation, that's what happens, right? And if he keeps shooting, he play and playing a good, solid, you know, pesky, uh, uh Dova Dova esque defense, they mm -hmm. will fucking take it, right? So we'll see. Um, hey, you know, unless another option comes along, I'm fine having Neto back in there. I like him as a third, like Neto. third point yeah. guard. At the same time, I mean, listen, we're, stuck, we're stuck with we're stuck with Rubio. Maybe Rubio's better next year, but I, you know, and I hope so. But yeah, you can sort of pray for that. But I don't Man, think it's yeah. important bringing back Neto because uh, because Neto we have to bring back, right? We have to sign back, right? It was a one year contract, wasn't it? I th I that's what I remember. I think that was a one year deal. I, I gotta imagine he's going somewhere else. We can't pay him. He he was a valuable player. Someone should sign him, and I don't think we can afford to carry you know four point guards like can he can't. He was on the bench for most of the year. That was insane. That was crazy. It was, Ruby was just not cutting it. And, you know, maybe we cut Rubio and keep Neto, which we well, I would not be opposed to. Um, but that's that's a hard choice to make. And honestly, I would probably do that at this point. I'd take Neto. Unless Rubio really just needs another, like needed more time to recover fully and maybe. Come back. He, I mean, he was I not. I won't fault them for sticking with Rubio, but, you know. That was so. not the player we saw last year. No, and that's that, for sure. we had good reason to suspect that it wouldn't be this player we saw last year. Yeah, there was just hope because he was such a great positive piece to that to that that early run last year. It's just such. I don't know. It's. <laughs> it sucks, were, man. Were we, were we just wrong, Patty? And is the whole thing? I, you know, a lot of this does come down to Mobley. For our future, yes. for our future. I'm not saying this series, but like. How optimistic should we be about the future? Um, Look, I'm Mobley, still I'm still pretty optimistic on Mobley. I think his his offense was gone in this series, but that's he had game coming into this. I think there's just no idea how to utilize him properly. Exactly, and, and the thing with Mobley you think about is, look, at the end of the day, he did not have a good playoffs. It was his first playoffs, and he played against a physical team when that was his big Achilles heel because he's just he's. Thin man, he's he's fucking twenty one years old. 
he's still growing into his body. He's just getting his, you know, he's still building up his bulk. He's still figuring shit out. But man, he really took a leap this year. It wasn't like seismically, but like he's got all the defensive talent. He's got all of these smart, intelligent playing that he can do. Uh, uh, moving across the board, he makes the defense work during the regular season. Translating to the playoffs is like a matter of, you know, weights. It's a matter of uh, expanding his jump shot so he can be more of a threat. Not necessarily from three. I think that's a little too much, but just keeping him out of the West. If he can just knock down consistently those those mid-range jumpers, that's a huge difference, man. It's a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, did I lose you for Sam? Uh, sorry, I just had a little hiccup. Um, you got me now? I guess you yeah. Yeah, I, I – um... Let's hope he comes back with a nice big ass next year. <laughs> Just bulk up that ass. That's really what I'd like to. That's my prescription for him for the off season is a nice deadlift and squat regimen and uh, a lot of lean protein. I, I but I also feel like he's going to be like Giannis in terms of like the shoulders. It's just to build bulk up the shoulder. Like like that's where you can see the bulk of the mass coming into. Like I don't think Giannis is big ass, does he? Right. He's got those thinny pogo legs. He's got more of an ass than you think he might, actually, Giannis. Okay. Yeah. All right. Not uh, a, not, yeah, it's, I, I, I would like to see – he's got room. I still am a believer that his shot can come around. You know, his handle was – still. I, he didn't deploy his handle in the playoffs, which is what I wanted, and you saw it during the regular season, and it would often result in a turnover, but it was, like, better. He could go end-to-end end on occasion. Yeah. And that's the thing, Giannis, Giannis did, did did the same thing where he wasn't really that strong early on and kept developing that and didn't develop a jump shot, but he was able to develop that handle. But he also had like the aggressive dunks that I just that's a weird thing. Like people keep trying to compare him to people. He's just he's not comparable. He's he's a he's a he is Evan Mobley. Yeah. He he's got some talents that Giannis doesn't have. He doesn't have Giannis's like ferocious, like leaping, dunking, crazy shit. He doesn't have that. He's got better touch than Giannis does. He's got better shooting touch than Giannis does, but he doesn't have Kevin Durant's shooting touch, right? So it's like it's it, there's there's somewhere it, he's 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 in a different spot from every other person, but he's still going to be and can still get so much better in a way that can unlock a lot of things for the Cavs. But and that will derive what we can do. And the main thing I think first and foremost is he gets pushed around uh, by big dudes and. He's going to need to be the center sometimes. He can't just be, especially when when Jared Allen's getting shoved around too. He can't be the small, the smaller yeah. forward, right? He can't be the power forward. He's got to be able to be the center when he needs to be the center, right? Like you know, it can't be for he's, he's he's not going to put on like you know fifty pounds, but he's going to be have to be able to hold his own a little more. It was just awful seeing like Randall just just drive in and just That's put him in the lane. He couldn't he couldn't stop him. And I, there's nothing to do. He did everything he could, but like he just didn't physically, physically couldn't stop him from driving in the basket in the playoffs. Yep. You know? And again, so, that's not why we lost. No, it's not exactly. You know, Mobley was not the problem. Let's be good. Randall's off, the, Randall's offense was shit. Hey, for the series. God, I wish Randall played so much. Shit. More. Hey, you know, played so much more. He was off his defense was the worst. He was just ghost walking half the time. In game two, he was the biggest reason we fucking blew him out. He was just all the more reason it's so infuriating that they weren't bringing Allen up to set screens to pull Robinson away from the basket and leave Randall as the one dealing with folks down. Oh, just oh, fuck, man. It was just, it was just yeah. that. And that, at the end of the day, Matty, that's why I'm like JB has to go because everyone was saying it. It was very clear and obvious. And draw him out of the paint. He made adjustments in game two that with some great shooting from a lot of dudes paid off in a huge win. They played super physical, right? Jared Allen and, and Mobley were getting tons of all boards. We, that, that's part of the reason that, that that game two is the reason why the offensive boards and the whole rebounding disadvantage is not as crazy as it looks in the whole series because that one game yeah, um, where we won, I think, the battle. Uh, I... So he had that adjustment, and then he just panicked and went away from not only went away from it, but over doubled down the wrong things and just and just blew up what the Cavs were doing. He took one adjustment and 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 lost his way, and then doubled down on that one adjustment when it wasn't working. And again, it was like, dude, 
Uh, so I just, I've lost, I've completely lost confidence in JB as a tactician um, and, and getting these young men ready. Yeah. These are I, nice young men who needed to be prepared for battle and they were led to slaughter. Yeah. Oh, Patty. That's a good line. Yeah. He didn't prepare them for war. He prepared them for um, a, a nice chess match as opposed to, um, you know, a fucking dog fight. Yeah. If you know where, if you know about dunk junk or dog change, you gotta prepare your fucking men for a dog fight. That's not what fucking happened. Yeah, that, it's, and I don't, th I don't think we have time to fuck around next year. That's no. the thing. No, you got two more that, years of control with 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 Dom and Mitchell, and I think we can offer him an extension after next year. Yep, and if he turns that down, then you got to deal him. Yep. So next year's the fucking year. Yeah, you go two more years. No, no. Next year's the fucking year. So yeah. Fucking around Kobe Altman. I, I, I just don't. I don't think he can. And I will say this: Look, if Kobe Altman sticks with him, look, man, better be fucking right. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's his job on the line. This is gone. This is gone. Next year, if JB's not the guy, yeah. and I, I, I was willing to give JB a lot of fucking rope, and he. He used all of it up in this series and told me he's not fucking ready. Yeah. And I don't have confidence from watching him, especially in game five. After game three and game four, he came back with the same fucking plan that got us blown out in games three and four. That is not someone who shows signs of growth. Yeah. I didn't you know, that's all in a short time frame. So maybe some introspection – some conversations, some tape, some spirit. Look, anyone can improve. And again, I am a believer in JP. I was a believer in JP. That dude rallied this team. That dude helped create a winning culture out of a really deeply depressing losing culture. Oh, yeah. Right? With a bunch of dudes we did not. John Beeline. John Beeline, for God's sake. Right, right. He made something out of nothing. He tried weird fucking things. He had balls to try that shit. He was an experimenter. I want this guy to succeed. I really do. That's why like, I don't like talking about it in this frame. I you know, generally hate talking about anything with the job. It's just that we're talking about championships here. In show it. So, like, look, I'm not saying he has to go. I'm saying, that, like, if it was me, yeah, I think that's what I would do. But I'm saying that if Kobe sticks with him. I can buy that. But man, JB's got to really soul search and change the fucking shit out of this. He has to recognize that he, he, not the team, fucking failed. Yeah. I think that's part of it. Like, we all fail. We all fail. We all fuck up. We can all redeem ourselves. So I believe that JB can redeem himself. But I, 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 I gotta see something different. I gotta see something different uh, early next year. I don't know. I don't know. We'll we'll see early on in, the, in, in our podcasting season for for season twenty twenty three to twenty twenty four if if he's showing us any signs that he's changed or if he's even here by that yeah. time. But I, my gut, by the way, is that he's going to be here. I, I just I, I don't see Kobe losing him, but we'll see. I think that's sort of mine too. So, yeah, Ugh. I mean, again, I, I just, I just hope that that JB's open to the fact that he's got to do more than just say Donovan go win games and go be awesome. He's got to find ways to use him the way other teams use great players. Yeah, and think about the regular season as preparing for the postseason. I mean, that's yeah. not winning, not not getting seeding. Just, just, just win. Just fucking win. I mean, we've seen what we've seen what seeding. Have a winning record on the road. Have a winning yeah. record on the road. That's going to be a goal next year. That that was I think I raised that in my pre pre series yeah. nervousness, but us having a losing record on the road was never a good sign for a team. No. And they've never won a championship. I think a, a team that's had a losing record on the road. That and uh, you know what game outside of the playoffs are? We, do you remember our worst loss of the year, Patty? There is one that was the absolute worst loss of the year. Oh yeah, against the scrubs, the Golden State Warriors. That's the one. Fucking embarrassing. That was a they, real big al uh, five alarm fire shit because we had all our starters, right? Didn't we? Everybody was playing that game. 
fucking. I mean, I don't, maybe Wade was hurt or something, but like everybody that mattered was, was playing. He wasn't in the wrong. He didn't play the playoffs. He played like With two minutes. None. Of, I, just mm. brutal, brutal. Ugh. Well, look. Let's not end on that note. We're in a dark spot. The whole point was to get all the darkness out. Uh, again, my if I can give you my my upside here. Yeah, let's hear it. Uh, my upside is if we keep JB. Uh, he did good job in the in, in the in the regular season. He's shown some knack for things. Uh, you know, I I gotta think he's the kind of person that can recognize when he's failed and when he's done something wrong, and and be shown and seen the right way maybe he sees that uh uh maybe he learns that he's got to start coaching the regular season for the postseason maybe he learns he's got to start creating his rotation and what his good rotation is going to be and not just keep tinkering but actually start preparing the men for that yeah the men for what that's going to take uh donna mitchell look i'm not worried about him in the regular season but i think jb's got to figure out what did i do wrong to destroy the beg- the best weapon I had, the one that we mortgaged yeah. the entire decade of assets for. I it's not on Mitchell's fault. JB has to recognize that that it's on him to unlock that fucking special weapon. And what did he do wrong there? What can he do to make the best use of Jared Allen's talents? Right? What can he do to change that? Because yeah. like Jared Allen should be like a. There's no reason that Jared Allen can't be. A, uh, a a Tristan Thompson type force, right on the board. Yeah. He should be like that. that, that wiry guy just, just, just anticipates shit. Like that's the way he fucking is. He's got the long ass arm. He should be doing that. Yeah. Why can't we make that work? How can he keep developing Evan Mobley? How can he convince Darius Garland to shoot ten fucking threes a game? Because that dude is a fucking boss. And he needs to shoot way more than Donovan Mitchell shooting threes. Yeah. He's a three point shooter. It should be. Uh, Dental Mitchell actually was a better three-point shooter this year, but that but I feel like that's not repeatable next year potentially, but we'll see. Um, trust a Coro, man. Keep developing that dude. Let him keep shooting those three. He was he was he was a revelation this late second half season and in the playoffs. He was hitting those shots. Yeah, he missed a couple early in those first two games. Stick by him. Yeah, by going dude. away from him right away was let them put him on an island because you know what? He's fucking hitting those threes. If he's hitting 35%. We're crushing them. Yeah, I will take his defense at thirty-five percent three-point shooting. Yes, I'll take it. Yeah, D- believe in him. Use Levert in the right situations, and then Kobe get us some other pieces. If 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 the Lakers, who are the most like poorly, like haphazardly, shittily managed franchise I can think of, who only has the stars it has primarily because they are the LA Lakers and they have that imprimatur of the brand, that is mm-hmm. a I mean, that, that, and dude, that is a poorly run franchise. And look what they fucking did, man. Yeah. I would take so many of those those, those garbage pieces they picked up. Now, they still have some assets left over, but not that much. They didn't give up that much to get all this shit. They had one first round draft pick. They did. but And they protected it. But they got a lot of pieces. We, we only need like one or two. Kobe has shown an ability to get that shit, and I think it's time to be aggressive again. I know that, like, look, Levert, we can look back and say, oh, shit, this is a bad move, blah, blah. But, like, I don't know. I- I'm happy we have Levert. Levert makes the team better than, than, than we didn't have. Like, Yeah, as crazy as he was driving me in the middle of the season, he got better. He, he played well the, the back end of the season. Yep. And I think For he's sure. – I think he, if he if he knows what his role is, like he can, if he's, he's got to play within himself. When he gets out of that, he drives me insane. But so so you know, if JB stays, look, that's the learning season for everybody. That um, what we did last year is not nearly good enough. It's embarrassing, and what's the point of playing if you're going to go out like that? Which means you got to change a lot of shit. If they yeah. all recognize that, and it sounds like listening to them, they all fucking did. All right, let's see what these guys got. These are really fucking talented individuals, and uh, you don't have to be an asshole to play your fucking ass off, but you got to practice at it. If you don't yeah. practice it, if you don't do it day in, fucking day out, then you don't know how to do it. When, when 
push comes to shove. Doesn't mean you can't learn it though. This team can learn it. This team has talent. So let's see what happens. So that's my positive spin on the end of this dark black hole of the playoff run. Did I convince you at all? Yeah, I'm gonna Patty. I said I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm good. I pre-griefed. Which lie did okay. I tell? <laughs> did you buy that? <laughs> I'm not sure how I did it, but I, I sort of talked myself into it. I sort of talked myself into it. Let's uh, be very interested to see what they do this off season. Very interested. Um, all right. Well, now we're stuck with the Guardians for the rest of the summer. Good. Well, they're doing great though, Pat. Ooh. And, uh, quite. Ha, huh, Tanner Bybee. He looked great. Uh, Logan Allen. Logan Allen looked great. Back to back, eight strikeout uh, rookie debuts is a fucking mm -hmm. great way to start. Uh, you know, Bieber, get McKenzie back. Uh, I mean, Valley comes back. Ah, bullpen pulled back into shape. They're starting to look better. Uh, uh, you know, they, they need start, to start hitting, hitting the ball. Better. I mean, that's the crazy thing. They've been hitting poorly, and this team, this this batting lineup, is like, like demonstrably better than the shit we were rolling out last year. You've replaced, uh, uh, oh fuck, who was that guy that drove me crazy? Uh, Owen Miller. Owen Miller. Replace Owen Miller with Josh Bell. And Josh Bell's been struggling, but Jesus Christ, I will take Josh Bell over Omilla every fucking day of the week and twice on Wednesday. Uh, and you replaced, uh, uh, you know, our our catcher who I love, but we couldn't hit a fucking thing with Hedges. Mike Zanino. Hedges with Mike Zanino. Zanino's been hitting the ball. I mean, has, has been hitting the ball. So it's like, it, it's weird. It's crazy. I mean, Zanino has been letting every single fucking ball bounce in the dirt and get past him. That I, I miss from Hedges. <laughs> That's been not great. It has been part of the issue. But the offense is the bigger issue right now, to be honest. And that feels like it's going to turn around because this is a. No, everybody's better. underperform. I, nobody's overperforming. No. Right no. Like, literally, nobody is over. Uh, Straw, maybe. But I yeah, think Straw, maybe. A, maybe. But I think that's actually pretty close to what he is. SpongeBob had a couple of good swings. Uh, uh, that's it. Swing? Yeah. What's he hitting? No. 200? He's now at 200, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But, but no, he had a really good swing that made me feel like, oh, that's the SpongeBob. That double. I saw that. You texted yeah. me about that. I saw that hit. Yeah, that lunging swing, which like that's the thing he does. When he gets his arms extended and he looks like he's just like flicking it and he like yep. knocks it a million feet. Like that's the shit I need to see from him. And that's that's why you, that's why you get that's why you have patience with someone like you know SpongeBob. So eh, all right, Guardians. Uh, we'll, we'll 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 come back again. We'll visit again soon. Uh, soonish, not as soon as we've been on the uh, no. beat here, but a couple uh, weeks, Patty. We'll digest some playoffs. We'll take a look at uh, where the Guardians are. Talk some Browns. I've got the yeah, NFL Brown, draft on now. Happening. I know draft's happening. We, 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 we don't draft until what day three? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> this is bizarre. I I paid no attention to this year's. This draft. is our Super Bowl, man. I even I didn't even know the draft was happening until I saw my phone light up. Huh? So I think your buddy, uh, what's it, what's the kid you babysit, Zerm? <laughs> Yes, Jordan's are. I think it Jordan's was him. I follow him, and he was like, "I have paid no attention to the draft this year. I feel very no. weird and disengaged yeah. from it." I was like, I, "I don't. I haven't paid attention to any of these players. I don't know what." I really weird. want Jordan Zern to put on his Twitter profile that he was babysat by the executive producer for Many Hassan's show. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Why can't you just do that? Just, just as a favor. Please. Just once. Just once, man. <laughs> Oh man! All right, all right. I'm in a better place now. Uh, I, I'm ready to go uh, and uh, go go to not go quietly into that night uh, uh, into rage, rage against the dying of the light. Ooh, that's a little too that that's a little much for this, Patty. I don't know. That's kind of fish, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah, I, I don't know. If we had lost the tough seven game series that we were really in in the second, yeah, I, I, I wanted that if we won and we're against the Bucks and took them to seven and lost a heartbreaker and we were so mad and upset but optimistic and we're gonna and we're too, that that's too optimistic of everything's. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is is that we shouldn't go out like the 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 whimpering like pathetic you know f fart noises that we went out with this night i'd like us to rage and rage against the time oh okay it's more aspirational <laughs> that's what i'm saying that's dark I'm, it's more like this is what we should be doing we should yeah. not go out quietly into that night good night which we fucking just did 
Yeah. We went out quietly into that good night. I oh. think we should not do that, Maddie. No. I think that's a bad idea. I think it's a bad plan. I, I, suggest, I suggest we should rage. Yeah. Rage against the dying of that light. Fellas, how about a little rage? How about a little rage? Can we? Can, can we just a little, little bit of rage? <laughs> uh, but that will be for next time. Uh, for now, that does it for the Cleveland Sports Hour. Until next time, this is Maddie and Patty saying, of oh, for Hey, all right. Play us bad, but we nailed the friendship. That's the important part. There's something. There is something. All right, buddy. Um, by the way, have you seen Mrs. Davis yet? Oh, I've been watching it. It's so fucking good. I'm only uh I'm I'm gonna finish the second episode in a minute. I've watched the first three that dropped, and I think the Fourth one is to drop tonight, so I'm going to watch it right now. Oh, fourth is dropping tonight. I'm going to finish second. 